Hi everybody, Matt Bernier, Mike Beard, taking a look back at last Saturday's Beholder Mile, one mile down at Santa Anita Park. Unfortunately, we had two scratches going into it. It was already a short field to begin with. It left us with a field of three. Might have been the <laughs> only three-horse grade one race you'll see any time this year, and for that matter, any time in the near future. They break from the gate, and I think the race, really, the dynamic of it changed early on. When you see Vale Dory being hustled out from the inside, and Finest City, you kind of figured she'd be forward. Yeah. Victor Espinosa, though, he's going to kind of take the initiative and bull his way through, and I think at that point, this entire thing changes. Yeah, it was kind of uh, weird to see, too, because it just seemed to me like, and I don't know if you agree with this or not, but it seemed like Mike Smith on Finest City could have gone after this horse and he just seemed like he didn't want to and um, I think once Victor sensed that he wasn't going well he said I, then I'll just go and I'll race this horse and he races her for a long time. I thought Finest City's only chance to win the race was to try to clear off and take the field yeah. gate to wire. The minute that changed to the extent that it did here it essentially turned into a match race because we know Finest City she's pr preferably a, a sprinter yeah. she's not really a route horse. I agree. It turns into a match race here and you see Vale Dory out there the fractions aren't that fast but she's taking heat the entire way from Stellar Wind, and you can make the case that at, at this point, Stellar Wind just might be a better horse. Yeah, I think that's probably the case. And I, I say that um, while I want to recognize the race that Valdori ran here, because yes. she was dead game yes. in this race, not really wanting to give it up to this horse. You'll see her as they turn, they get down to about mid stretch, and you'll see her flash her tail like I, I really I don't have work. anything yeah. else to give here but she gave everything that she had this was a, a nice performance from her and as opposed to the um, the shoemaker mile that we looked at earlier where the fractions were faster but there really wasn't any pressure for heart to heart these fractions aren't that fast but she's under pressure the yeah. entire way from a really good horse and you see she's still digging in gamely and you've got stellar wind on the outside with Espinosa breathing down her neck Vale Dory flashing the tail clearly she's just giving it everything she's got she can't quite hang on though Stellar win the champion. She gets up and wins this thing by a neck. Finest City a number of lengths back. Yeah. And you take a look here at the horse card here. Now Stellar wins over $2 million. This is just a, a very, very talented horse yeah, for John really Sadler. She hasn't done a heck of a lot wrong throughout her career. Her couple losses that she has mixed in there. You've got big names that are in there. Yeah. We're talking about you know the beholders of the world and, and the, the songbirds who unfortunately you know, it would be fascinating to see what would have happened in last yeah. year's distaff had Stellar Wynn not missed the break as badly as she did because Right. Who knows? Maybe it's a three-horse photo finishing the distaff. Anyway, she's a very, very talented mare. She's 9 for 14 lifetime. She earns a 100 buyer speed figure. It was nice to see her get back from that 94 that she earned. Now, keep in mind, I say she only earned a 94. She still won the grade one apple blossom right. earlier this year. So, no, two grade one victories to her name in 2017. Vale Dory loses nothing in defeat no. in this spot. Finest City, we made it clear. She's probably a sprinter, so I don't want to hold this one too, too much against her. I agree. And you know what? The interesting thing is, you bring up Vale Dory, you can make the case that if Stellar Wind isn't the horse to beat in the division, I mean, maybe it's Songbird who will see yeah, the we'll Ogden Fifth on Saturday. Right. But guess what? If you're separated by a neck, maybe some things go a little bit differently. There's, I'm not ready to write her off and say she can't <laughs> run with Stellar Wind. She keeps impressing me, that horse. I, you know, Slowly it, it always surely. felt like, you know, Baffert, I, I think he did the right thing with her sort of picking the spots, and she wasn't beating the greatest fields in the world. She got on a pretty good run there for a while on the way into this race, but she just kept winning. Yeah. Um, and she kept impressing me. And we, uh, Dan and I did the stakes preview for this race. We talked about it as I wasn't so impressed with her most recent start leading into this Agreed. one. That was on a wet track, yeah. and it was sort of more like a, a workman-like performance, but she bounced back, I think, in a big way here. I mean, I was really impressed with the race that she ran, even though she was only second best. Very good effort in here, but you can't take anything away from the winner, Stellar Win. She's a champion in her own right. She earns a 100 buyer speed figure, a 120 time form U.S. rating, taking the beholder mile.